Uh, hi everybody, I'm Justin Hoff. Uh, welcome to Lakers Spotlight and MLive.com. Today, our final interview here in the Lakers Spotlight. I'm very pleased it can be with uh, Tim Selgo, Director of uh, Grand Valley State Athletics. So, welcome to the show, Tim, and uh, thanks for taking the time. Well, thanks, Justin. Appreciate you having me. Appreciate your coverage of the Lakers. All right, uh, uh, Tim, 14 years and now 15th uh, entering as Athletic Director at GVSU. Uh, like most Athletic Directors at the collegiate level, you were once a collegiate student athlete yourself, University of Toledo men's basketball, and uh, back in the day, quite the shooter, especially from the free throw line. Speak of uh, your days uh, at Toledo. Well, I had I had a great experience in uh, uh, at University of Toledo. I often tell this to our student athletes. Uh, it was a great experience, but it wasn't an easy experience. I came out of a real small town in Ohio called Pettisville, Ohio, and was all state and all that, but it was a small school. And I got to Toledo, and all of a sudden, the competition was better, the practices were harder, uh, everything was new, I was on my own, and it wasn't easy for me, especially my freshman year. And I think that's a lesson for a lot of student-athletes. At some point in their college career, they're going to face adversity, they're going to face a tough time. And oftentimes, the answer is just to hang in there. And uh, thankfully, I had uh, wonderful parents and very supportive. Uh, my dad was a high school teacher and coach, and, and they just encouraged me to do the best I could. And regardless of how things turned out, they were going to love me because I was their son. And I think that's a good lesson a lot of parents should adopt today, that regardless of how their son, son or daughter does in their sporting experience, just tell, let them know it's okay, do the best you can, and uh, try not to put any additional pressure on them. Uh, so I went through my college career and, and uh, uh, I worked awfully hard at it. I had to, to I had to become more athletic and I did. Uh, I, I worked extremely hard on my conditioning and uh, turned out to be an absolutely phenomenal experience because we, I, I played with some really good players and names that people wouldn't know today but three of my teammates were uh, drafted in the second round by the NBA draft and, and that, that's pretty high level for Mac school. Uh, so I was fortunate to play with some great players and great teams, and, and more importantly, I played with a, for a great coach, a guy by the name of Bob Nichols, still the winningest coach in the history of the Mid-American Conference in men's basketball, still is to this day, and he, he taught me so much, uh, and, and hopefully some of the, uh, I've been able to transcend some of the great things I learned from him to our coaches and student-athletes here at Grand Valley. Uh, so we got to two NCAA tournaments, I got to play in a Sweet 16, and it turned out to be just a great experience for me. Uh, back in 1979, that tournament, uh, the legendary birth of uh, March Madness, kind of uh, everybody says it was the first time where there was actually seeds. Uh, you were number five seed then. Bird and Magic were in that tournament. Uh, you were just one game away from playing against Magic Johnson, but you did play against the Lute Olsen Iowa Hawkeye team, beat them, and you played against Notre Dame which we'll, we'll touch on a little bit later with some Grand Valley stuff, but against Digger Phelps. So speak about your tournaments. You were in the 79 and the 80, but that 79 tournament, looking back, that has to be a, a phenomenal experience. Well, to go take a step back even further, Justin, the last game of the regular season, uh, we were uh, behind Central Michigan one game in the standings, and we beat Eastern Michigan at home, and thankfully they lost to Kent State, and that caused a tie. And that year we had only played Central Michigan once, so there had to be a one one game playoff to determine who goes to the NCAA. That was before a conference tournament, and we beat Central Michigan at, at Chrysler Arena in Ann Arbor in a one game playoff. Uh, a great game and great crowd, and, and beat them. And then we traveled down to uh, Bloomington, Indiana on Saturday. That's where the uh, first round of the NCAA was. Now, it's interesting, too, because there were only 32 teams in the tournament that year. It makes me sound ancient, I know, as we're talking about going to 96 now, but there were only 32 that year, and uh, we beat Iowa on a last-second shot. Uh, teammate Stan Joplin, who is, uh, coached at Toledo for a while, is a great person and great player and coach, uh, made a last-second shot, and we beat Iowa, who was coached by Lute Olson, who was a Hall of Fame coach. And as time went along for the next 15 years, when Lute went to Arizona, he sort of had a history of having first round knockouts. Uh, I think at Arizona they lost to Santa Clara one year and they lost his lower seats. Well, we were the first one to knock him out. And that was a, quite a thrill, uh, you know, sold out Bloomington, uh, Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. 
And then we played uh, in the Sweet 16 at Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. Now there's Conseco Fieldhouse, and of course they held the Final Four at Lucas Oil Stadium with say 80,000 people or whatever. Back then, Market Square Arena was, was, uh, it was a tremendous arena. It sold out, and we played Notre Dame in the semifinals in Michigan State with Magic Johnson uh, and, and Jay Vincent and those guys played LSU in the other semifinal. And uh, I can distinctly remember we're playing Notre Dame with four minutes to go in the game. It's 62-61 Notre Dame. And uh, they shot and missed, got the rebound, shot and missed, got the rebound, and, and missed again. And on the third attempt, Kelly Chapuka scored for the Irish. Uh, and that gave them a three-point lead. And that was before the three-point play. That really makes me feel old now. Uh, and, and, and they went on to win 79-71. But, so it was a great game the whole way. Uh, wonderful experience, and that Notre Dame team had not only Kelly Chapuka, Bill Ambeer, Bill Hanslick, uh, uh, Tracy uh, Jackson, Orlando Woolridge, all these guys that had significant NBA careers were on that team, and we almost beat them, and then they went on to lose to Magic Johnson, of course, uh, Magic played Bird in the finals, and, and, and that was it. My senior year, uh, most of us returned, and we were very good. Sports Illustrated had us 14th in the country to start the season, and we ended up 21 and five, I think, in the regular season, uh, and we played uh, uh, Florida State in the first round. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, my senior year was the first year that uh, we had a conference tournament. Uh, the MAC implemented a conference first tournament. First year. First year, we won the conference regular season by three games, and uh, we had to turn on win the tournament. And you know that that argument still holds true today. Is you know they were the best team throughout the season. And now they got to prove themselves again in the tournament. Well, we did, and we knew that. You knew that going in. So, yeah, nothing. So we went and won the tournament, conference tournament, and then we went to uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, and lost to Florida State. And I told our men's basketball team this year, you know, they went down to Owensboro, Kentucky. Uh, very similar circumstances. Uh, Bowling Green was where Western Kentucky is. Uh, arenas are very much alike as Kentucky Westlands was, only much bigger, probably two and a half times the size, but I told our team, I said, it's the same thing. I, you know, the season ended for me in, in, in Kentucky, season ends for you in Kentucky. The only difference is none of you guys are seniors. I was a senior. That was it. And I said, so think about that throughout this off season. You don't want that to be it next year. You want to keep going. And so, you know, it was a great experience. Uh, in, in my senior year, the NCAA expanded the field to 40 teams. So I went from 32 to 40. Uh, and so uh, there were 16 games the first night, and there were um, 24 teams that got a bye. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. Anyway, Kentucky had a bye. And if we'd have won, we'd have played Kentucky in Bowling Green, Kentucky. I can imagine how many Kentucky fans would have been in that arena. A lot of blue. Uh, and they had Kyle Macy, they had Sam Bowie, Melvin Turpin. I mean, they, had, they were pretty good. And uh, I really looked wanted to have that opportunity and it just wasn't to be. It's funny how you distinctly remember all those moments, but uh, from, from there you went on uh, to be an assistant coach with the uh, men's squad at Toledo, and then you were the head coach of the women's basketball team uh, for a couple seasons, then you later went into the athletic administration and then coming to GVSU in 1996. Uh, what made the switch from coaching into the athletic uh, administration? Yeah. You've had so much su success since, but what made the switch? Well. I actually I was a grad assistant for one year for Toledo in the men's basketball program. I taught and coached one year at the high school level. I was an assistant boys varsity basketball coach. I was the head boys tennis coach. And it was a great experience for me. You learn how to teach when you, when you get thrown in a secondary school setting. And then uh, having been with the men's program, my coach hired me back. I was assistant for him for three years and head women's coach for three years. And uh, my children, uh, our oldest children at that time were very young, four and two. and if you're going to be good as a college coach, you have to recruit good talent. And the only way to recruit good talent is to go find it and go convince them to come to your school. They're not going to come to you. You have to go to them, which means you're gone from home a lot. And I felt at that time that I really enjoyed the recruiting experience. I just didn't like being gone from home all the time. Uh, to get good players, that's what you have to do. And uh, so I thought, always thought all along I would enjoy administration. I had a course in, in my senior year in college, uh, athletic administration, and I have always my whole life liked all sports. In high school I played baseball and golf in addition to basketball. 
like I said, I coached tennis, uh, loved football, even though my school was too small, we didn't have it. So I loved all sports, and uh, uh, for me, it was a, a no-brainer to, when the opportunity to be the Associate Athletic Director at Toledo opened up, I was 29 years old, I was a young age to get into administration. It was the, the right thing for me to do for me and my family. Uh, and I enjoyed that for eight years. I was the associate AD. I was kind of number two person in command at Toledo. And so I dealt with a lot of things, you know, my staff here deals with uh, a lot of the day-to-day -day problems. And I learned an awful lot about it and uh, really wanted to be an athletic director. I wanted to be an athletic director at a place where we could raise our family and have success. And um, lo and behold, in uh, 1996, actually in the fall of 95, uh, Doug Woods gave me a call who was currently our softball coach. At that time was our head athletic trainer and softball coach, and he was on the search committee. And uh, Doug had been an assistant trainer at Toledo uh, up until my freshman year. And uh, so he knew of me and, and, and called and, and just asked if I would be interested. And, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll send my stuff in. And so I did, and then as I did my research on Grand Valley and Grand Rapids, uh, for me and my wife, it was, a, it was really an easy decision. Uh, it wasn't easy in the sense that we had both lived in the Toledo area our whole lives and had to uproot, if you will. It was very easy in the sense of this is a great place where we've raised our family and it's a great school uh, where we knew we could be successful, and it certainly worked out wonderfully for me in the 14 years I've been here.